Good morning everyone and, and welcome on Sunday morning, on a snowy Sunday morning, um, on Sunday the 24th of January. It's lovely to be able to join together to have our online service for Strain Presbyterian. But um, I just I trust you've had a good morning already. Maybe you've been up for a while, maybe you've been outside building snowmen or having a snowball fight. Um, but thank you now for taking this time out just to join us as we worship together. Uh, I've got a couple of announcements to make this morning, so please bear with me as I do so. First one is probably probably pretty obvious, um, just with the announcement from the government that we will be in lockdown until the 5th of March. It's no surprise that PCI have given us the direction as well that we should continue just having everything online until the 5th of March uh, when it will be reviewed again. So we will continue just like this. Each, each Sunday morning as we worship together just in this way and we'll also be continuing with the morning Bible readings and with our Wednesday night Bible study as well. Uh, so feel free any morning Monday to Friday to, to watch. It goes out at half nine in the morning but you can pick it up later on during the day if you want and then on a Wednesday night our Bible, stu Bible study is 7.30 um, and it, it goes out again live on uh, goes out on Facebook, um, and you can pick it up later on during the day as well, um, or any time during the week. So please continue to do that and join with us. One other announcement to make is just with regards to our drop off days. We weren't quite sure at first what we were allowed or not allowed to do with regards to drop off days. So we've been told that we are allowed to continue with um, our collections for food bank and for local charities to be able to help to support them during this time and we can use the church grounds for doing that. So this Thursday, which is the 28th of January, from 10 a.m. to 12 midday, we're gonna have our normal drop-off. So if you have any church envelopes that you wanna drop in, feel free during that time to drop it in. If you've got a donation that you want to give to um, our local food bank as well, please bring it down. Just so that you know, the food bank in particular at this time has said that they're looking for jam, for tinned hot meals, for diluting juice, tinned or powdered potatoes and for long life milk. And maybe also if you've already seen our post on Facebook uh, and it's now gone up onto um, our web pages, our website as well, Session made a decision to try and, we're going to try and support some local charities as well as our food bank. So two of our charities right on our doorstep are Belfast Central Mission and Simon Community. Uh, probably a lot of people will know the name Simon Community. They help people who have been made homeless. Uh, they are looking for like stored or uh, cupboard food as they call it. So things like pot noodles, uh, microwavable rice or pasta packets, uh, things which are dried goods. It's simply because of the fact that whenever people come into them, uh, it's so that they have something to eat, something to give to them straight away. And Belfast Central Mission, what they do in Bangor and the Ards, they help with the housing of 16 to 25 year olds who have fallen into difficulties or come out of care or having problems with their tenancies and such like. And they have asked that if, it's, if we can support them through shower gels, soap, shampoo, uh, items along those lines. So if you can donate any of those items we would really be grateful for them uh, and like I said it's going to be on Thursday this coming Thursday from 10 a.m. to 12 midday um, if you want to drop down to the church car park it'll be open and you can pull in and you can drop those things off so thank you uh, that is they are all the announcements that we have at this stage again if there's ever any changes um, happening to what's happening you know to our routine if we get any other information uh, I'll keep you posted and, and we'll keep it going and let you know. Now, I've only had, I only know of two birthdays for this incoming week. Uh, if there's any others that I have forgotten about or I don't know of, do let me know. Um, the, the, the messages that come up on the screen are a wee bit behind, so I may not get it in time. But if there's any other birthdays, let me know. I can even mention them next week or send me a text message. But the two birthdays that I know of for this upcoming week are Heather Flynn and David Mawinney. So happy birthday to you both for this week. Let's just pause this pray. Father, I thank you um, for this morning. Thank you as we come to worship you. 
Thank you that we are a family, a church family, and that we can continue to celebrate birthdays, and even during these strange and unusual times. So for Heather and for David, thank you. Uh, and thank you for the blessing upon them and upon their families. Please continue to look after them, Lord, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Just as we gather together this morning, um, I want to read a verse which is found in Psalm 48. This is Psalm 48, verse 9. It says, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love as we worship in your temple. I wonder where you're sitting this morning. Are you in the living room? Are you in the kitchen? Are you still lying in bed watching this? Uh, are you out and about for a walk somewhere and you've paused? Um, have you been out throwing snowballs and, and, and now you're, you're going to stop for a while and, and watch what we're doing and watch our service and, and join together in worship? Wherever you are, as we worship God, that you're in God's temple. This whole world God has made. It doesn't matter where we are, we are able to come and to worship him this morning. And that's today what we're going to do. So let us give thanks this morning and then let's come into God's presence and let us truly worship him this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for another day that you have blessed us with. Lord, it's, it's been an unusual day as we've woken up to the snow this morning. Um, and, and Lord, maybe there's been a bit of excitement in our households with children as they look out and say, see the snow, as they go out and play. Lord, just thank you. Thank you that you are the God who, who does bless us with the different seasons, with springtime and with summer, with autumn and with winter. Lord, this whole earth is your creation. This whole earth is your temple. And no matter where we are this morning, what we're doing, we thank you that we can join together to worship you. And Lord, whether we are watching this right now or whether we are watching it later in the week or whether we are listening to this on a CD, Lord, again, thank you that we are still connected to each other, but more importantly, we are constantly connected to you. Father, in all that we do this morning, we give you praise, we give you the glory and the honour. We just ask that you draw near to us this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, let me ask you a question. What have you been doing this morning? Um, if I were able to take the iPad and, uh, and show you out around the front of the mounts, um, there's a, a green area uh, and you would see that there's a couple of snowmen that have been built there already this morning because uh, some people have been out playing. Um, our neighbours have a, a snowman at their front door uh, and even Luke this morning has been building a snowman and a snow dog out the back of the house. I'm sure you've all been having some fun this morning in whatever you've been doing. Um, I've been getting ready that after the service here this morning I'm going to make some pancakes. And I thought I would cheat. I thought I would buy a, a mix that's already been made. So let me show you this mix. I know the writing's back to front. Apologies, it's because of the camera, but um, I have it. this and, and it, I had the jug of milk out ready to add to it when all of a sudden I realised and, and I looked again at the front of it. Now, maybe if you're really smart, you can read back to front what it says there. It says just add water. Oh, I very nearly made a mistake. I very nearly added milk to it instead of adding water to it. Uh, it wouldn't have turned out very nice, sure it wouldn't. And Luke and Anne have already said that you know they, they really want to try the pancakes. Uh, they're going to score me on how good they are. But imagine if I had added milk to that. I would have to throw it out and I'd have to say that I am really sorry. I've messed up uh, and I'm going to have to try and do something else for you. You know, we all make mistakes, don't we? We all do things that... Um, are wrong at times. Now, sometimes we make mistakes that are genuine. We don't mean to make those mistakes. Other times, maybe we have done something that we shouldn't have and we knew it in advance. We knew that we were going to do something that was wrong. And, you know, and afterwards, there's something really important that we should do and not say sorry. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, there are two brothers. The oldest brother is Esau. And the younger brother is Jacob. Now in those days, 
what used to happen was the eldest brother would be get a, what's called a, a blessing from the father when their dad would, would pass things on to them and would tell them that, you know, please continue to do what I've been doing and look after the farm or look after the animals and, and, and take care of them and may God bless you. That was for the eldest son to get. But Jacob wanted that for himself. So Jacob was really nasty. He, he, was, he was devious. He dressed up as Esau because um, his dad was blind so he couldn't see and he put on Esau's clothes and he made his dad some food the way Esau would have made and he pretended to be Esau so that he could get the blessing and then afterwards whenever his father had blessed him he ran away because he knew that he had stolen that from his brother and he shouldn't have but you know later on in Genesis in chapters 33 and 34 it tells us that Jacob wanted to go back home again and see his brother but he was really, really frightened to do so. So as he was getting close, he sent a gift to Esau. Now the gift was animals and servants. And then he came to Esau and he said that he was sorry. Now Esau could have been really cross with him. And Esau would have been quite right to be angry because of what Jacob had stolen from him. But Esau wasn't like that. Instead, Esau threw his arms around his brother gave him a great big hug and said, brother, it's okay, it's fine, don't you worry about it. And Jacob was so relieved. You know, maybe boys and girls ask us at times, we do things which are wrong, we're frightened, we're scared to admit that we've been wrong, but we know we really need to say sorry. We need to apologise for what we've done. But you know, that's the best thing that we can do. Saying sorry is so important because it lets the other person know that we realise that we've done something that was wrong. We realise that we shouldn't have done it and that we are sorry for what we have done. And that means that being sorry hopefully means that we learn that we will not do it again. So, boys and girls, for all of us, whether we are children or whether we are adults, we all need to learn that story of Jacob and Esau and how Jacob came and said, sorry. Yes, it was hard to do, but it was the right thing to do, the really important thing to do. So as we go about our day-to-day -day things, always remember, yes, sometimes we'll do things that are wrong, sometimes we'll get it wrong. Sometimes that's by accident, sometimes it's deliberate. But we have to learn to say sorry and to mean it. Uh, and to make the best effort we can not to do it again. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening. Um, there's going to be a little sheet which will go up later on, which is uh, the, the sheet that mum and dad or granny and grand or whoever brought the church would normally have got, uh, and it'll be there for you online. So parents, grandparents, um, that'll be there just to go over the story again. So thank you for listening so well. I want to read to you from God's Word this morning. I want to read to you one verse which is taken from Matthew chapter 5 and part of the Beatitudes. And then I want to read you a couple of verses from the Old Testament from Isaiah 48 and a couple of verses from the New Testament from 1 Peter chapter 1. So let me read this to you. Again, this is from the New Living Translation. So Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says this. God blesses those whose hearts are pure for they will see God. Then the passage from Isaiah 48 is verses 8 to 11. Yes, I tell you of things that are entirely new, things you have never heard of before. For I know so well what traitors you are. You have been rebels from birth. Yet for my sake and for the honour of my name, I will hold back my anger and not wipe you out. I have refined you, but not a silver is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. I will rescue you for my sake, yes, for my own sake. I will not let my reputation be tarnished. I will not share my glory with idols. And then 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. To be truly glad, so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. 
These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Lo, your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honour on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Amen. And we ask God to bless his word. Let's pause together before we look at um, that verse in Matthew chapter 5. Uh, and let's pray this morning. Let's pray for uh, the residents and staff of um, our PCI nursing homes and residential facilities. And also of all those nursing homes and facilities right the way around our country. Let's give thanks that the vaccine has been um, rolled out to all these places. I just ask for God to continue to look after our most vulnerable people at this time. Uh, let's, we've been also asked by PCI to pray for the general council of our church as they make decisions and, try and guide us during this time. As we know it's this difficult time uh, and we all have our own ideas of how we would do things and, and just like we've been saying boys and girls, sometimes we get things right, sometimes we get things wrong. Let's pray that general council have wisdom in doing that. And let's give thanks as well to the military staff who are going to be coming alongside our own NHS staff to help them and to support them. Let's pray for safety for them. And let's pray for the chaplains within our armed forces who are also supporting our military staff at this, day, at this time as they do the work of this. Not just here, but as they help out right the way across our country. So let's pause and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for an opportunity to, to meet together online, to worship you. And also an opportunity to give you thanks and to bring to you things which we are concerned about or things that we want to ask with your help with. Lord, we thank you that the vaccine has been rolled out through um, our nursing and residential homes to those people who are most vulnerable. And we do think particularly of our PCI homes. We think of all those who are residents within those homes and, and facilities, um, halfway houses and, and, and rehab centres, Lord, for those who, who need that help. And we thank you that it's there for them. And we thank you for the staff who are there um, helping and protecting and caring for these people. Lord, we ask for your hand to be upon those staff to keep them safe as they care for others. And Lord, also to keep them safe then as they go home to their family, that you be with them and help them and keep their family safe as well, so that they'll be well and able to look after others. Lord, so some, many times during um, lockdown, we, we, we do criticise um, those who are making decisions. Lord, help us not to criticise, but help us to pray for them and to support them. And in that role, Lord, we think about our church. We think about the General Council and the work that they do at this time. Uh, and the Standing Commission, which is there to, to guide us and to help us and to lead us. Lord, please give them wisdom. And Lord, we thank you for the military personnel who are helping out across the mainland and who are going to be helping us here in Northern Ireland. We thank you for their training and expertise. We thank you for their willingness just to serve other people and to help and we just ask that you would keep them safe as they do that. And Lord, we remember the chaplains, those who serve you by serving our armed forces. We again pray that you would keep our chaplains safe um, as they serve and safe then as they go home again to their own families. And that your arms of protection would be around them. That you would give them wisdom and, and show them where they need to be at this time. Lord, for all of us, just give us eyes to be open to the guide for those who are around us. To be able to see ways in which we can help and support. And to that end, Lord, we think about our, our giving day on Thursday. We just pray um, for the support, thanking you now, knowing the support that will come in um, for our food bank and for those local charities. And ask, Lord, that it really would get to those people who are most in need. Those who um, are struggling at this time. And that you would use it to be able to bless them in a very practical way. But also, Father, that they would realise through these donations just how much you love and care for them. So, Lord, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen.
Let me read to you again uh, that verse from the Beatitudes that I read this morning, which is Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. It says in that verse, God blesses those who are pure, for they will see God. I wonder what you're like when it comes to words and when it comes to language. Uh, how is the, the homeschooling be going for the parents out there or the grandparents who are doing it? Have you suddenly found yourself reaching for a dictionary at times to try and understand some of the homework, some of the words that's coming out, some of the homeschooling? Uh, I was looking at uh, the site for the Oxford English Dictionary and I wonder if you can guess how many changes they have made between September and December of this past year. Now that's new words that have been added or new meaning for words, new senses, or new ways in which the words can be used. They update um, the Oxford English Dictionary four times a year. So from September to December last year, they made 650 changes. That just shows you how much language changes at times. And, and maybe how I read, or the version of the Bible which I read to you this morning, again, is different from the version that you normally read. I read from the New Living Translation. Maybe at home you have that. Maybe at home you like to read the, the NIV. Or maybe you like to read the, the, the ESV, the English Standard Version. Maybe you still read the King James because that's what you know and that's what you love or the New King James. Uh, maybe you read the Good News. Or, uh, uh, maybe you have the message paraphrase to help you understand the Bible as well. Our understanding of language changes all the time. And so it, it's good for us whenever we're reading a passage, I guess, and we're reading the Beatitudes, as we try to understand what it's saying, maybe we, we look at the wording and we look at the meaning of the words. So that verse this morning is Matthew 5. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. That word pure, and now I... I'm going to attempt to say it in the Greek, so forgive me to anybody out there who understands Greek better than me, which would be most people. Um, the Greek word is katharos. And as you look at that word katharos, there are different ways in which it is used and different meanings which it can have. And all of those meanings, I feel, apply to, to what that verse is saying to us this morning. Now, really obvious answer. If you think of the word pure, um, maybe you think of clean um, or washed. You could think of the word in a longer sense, which is purified. And yes, that is one sense in which that word pure is used. And when you think about clean, and it says there, blessed are those who, let's use it as clean. Blessed are those whose hearts are clean, for they will see God. As Christians, we understand what that means by clean. It means that we have been forgiven by God. As, as we think about what it means to come and ask God for forgiveness, as it means what, what it means to have personal faith, to start in that journey, we know that being a Christian, or being a follower of Christ, of Jesus, means that we've had our sins forgiven. Some people can maybe remember a date and time when they, say, they said a certain prayer. Other people don't. It, it doesn't matter in that journey. What matters is that we have personal faith, that we realise that it's through what Jesus has done that we have that relationship with God. As Acts chapter 4 verse 12 puts it, this is how it puts it there. There, there is salvation in no one else uh, that God has given. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. There is salvation in no one else. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. And what Jesus meant was, it's only through what I'm about to do on the cross for you that you can be clean or that you can be pure, that we can have our sins forgiven. If we haven't done that, 
then the, the rest of the meanings of this word for pure don't matter to us. We have to start with that starting point. We have to start with the point wherever we say sorry for our sins and we are forgiven. We have to start with the point whenever we realise that we need Christ, that we need to accept what he has done for us. And we let God into our lives. We trust him. And at that point, he cleans our hearts or purifies our hearts or he washes away our sin. And we start that relationship with him. God cleans our heart. The second meaning, and sorry, I'm going to be really Presbyterian this morning. I'm going to give you three points. The second meaning is it, it can be used, that word katharos can be used in relation to um, corn. And can be used in relation to how corn is beaten or as the word is used, threshed on the threshing floor. To be separate, so the grain is separated from the husk and from the stalks or the chaff as it's called and then the chaff is removed. Now that's a process that takes time. If you, if you go onto YouTube uh, and you look it up, you'll, you'll see how um, sometimes people crush it with their hands, other people crush it with their feet, other people beat it with sticks. Some people would have had maybe a donkey that um, pulled around like a board through the grain, rolling over it, breaking it up so that the corn could be separated. And then you would take the corn and the idea of a threshing floor was it was like a barn which had doors at either end through which the wind would blow and you would throw the corn up in the air whenever the wind is blowing and the corn is heavy so it falls down again but the other bits the husks or the chaff as it's called as well like I said is light and the wind blows it away so it's a gradual process by which the grain is purified or the grain has the other bits removed from it which are it which are unnecessary, which contaminate it, which um, mean that it's not pure. And that's a bit like us. Whenever we start that personal relationship with God, yes, he cleans us of our sin, but our lives are still messy, aren't they? Our lives are still full of things which are not helpful or useful. Um, as Paul picks it as he writes in the New Testament, we become a new creation. And then God wants to gradually change us to be more like him. He wants us to get rid of those things from our life which are not helpful or not pure. That's what those two passages that we read earlier from Isaiah and from 1 Peter talk about. So the one from 1 Peter says, Be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as far tests and purified gold, though your faith is more precious. And so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it brings you praise and glory and honour on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. We go through situations, we go through trials and tribulations as we talk about. Our life goes through so many things and God has a purpose for everything that we experience. The purpose is that we would grow closer to him, that we would learn to trust him more, have more faith, that each day we would grow stronger in our understanding of him and we would grow more like him so that it brings glory to God. But it also talks about how um, on that day, it talks about how your praise and glory and honour brings you much praise and glory on the, and honour on the day whenever Christ is revealed. The Bible talks about storing up treasures in heaven. And we realise that as our lives are purified, as we grow more like God, it's about that storing up treasures in heaven and about growing in, in our relationship with him. It's God removing the chaff from our lives so that our lives would be more like him. And that leads us into the third reason, or the third understanding of that word for pure, a great katharos. Um, it's very much related it's part, part of the word that we in Greek they talk about the root of the word and how then the root is used to make other words and the, the root for katharos is also used um, to talk about being unmixed 
uh, or to be talking about being pure. Now that could be used in relation to um, milk or wine, not having water mixed with it. Or as it talked about the refiner's fire, but metal being pure and not having um, any alloy or anything else mixed with it. And that in a way talks about us having pure motives. Why do we do things? You know, God wants us to do things for his glory and honour. He wants us to do it so that everything points to him. That first passage in Isaiah 48 talked about, I will rescue you for my sake. Yes, for my sake. I will not let my reputation be tarnished. I will not share my glory with idols. The people in the Old Testament... God's people, the Israelites, um, they had allowed themselves to be tarnished. They had allowed people to worship idols. They had allowed outsiders to come in and not follow God's teachings. And as a result of that, they were no longer pure. And their motives weren't pure. And people were doing things for their own sake, for their own recognition. God doesn't want us to be involved in the life of our church family so that people pat us on the back and go oh, aren't you great he doesn't want us to be in it so that we attain a position of authority or respect um, for our sake it's not that we are gaining something from it God wants us to be motivated by the fact that we are doing this so that we bring glory to him. That we're doing this so that people realise that God is real. That God loves us and cares for us. And that God wants everyone to have that special relationship. To have that personal relationship with him. God wants our motives to be pure. Stop and think sometimes why do you do something? You know, at every stage in life, all of us will have done things because we want to look good. We want people to recognise us, don't we? We want to be seen. And yet, in a relationship with God, it's about people seeing God and not seeing us. What's the strap line of our church? Let his light shine. We want people to see God, don't we? We want, to see, we want people to realise who God is. We want our motives to be pure. So when you think about that beatitude, that verse in Matthew chapter 5, God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God really does want to bless all of us. He wants to bless us when our hearts are pure. When our hearts have been washed away of sin. When our lives, our actions things that we do every day have been purified now that will not finish until we reach heaven but also that our motives are pure that the reason that we do it is to show God to people that's what it's all about so yes as you look outside this morning as the sunshine now starts as I can see it coming through the window and as you can see snow outside and the snow will will start to melt you know, we talk about pure snow, about how it looks so white, but yet as it starts to melt, how you see the, the things inside it which are not pure, um, and how you see how it's contaminated or how it's dirty. Let us not be like that snow. Let us be pure. May our hearts be washed of sin. May our lives each day be purified that little bit more so that we are more like God. And may our motives, the reason why we do things, be pure so that others will see God. How will God purify you this week? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you again for how it teaches us, how it shows us, how it challenges us. Lord, that word pure, what it means to be pure. Help us each day, Lord, to be pure for you. 
But for anybody in our in our church, in our family, in our friends who hasn't yet started that journey of faith with you, we pray for them, asking that they would open up their hearts to you. And then, Lord, for the rest of us, those of us who have done that, help us each day to be more like you. Please purify our lives, Father, so that in everything, it would all point to you. Father, thank you. Now and always, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning and for watching. Um, I trust that you stay safe today, especially with that snow outside. Look after yourselves. And do challenge yourself each day about how you can be more pure for God. Um, if you're able to join in tomorrow morning, like I said, at half nine for our Bible reading or sometime later on in the day, then please do so. Um, and if you can join us on Wednesday for our Bible study, again, please come along and join us for that. Um, in the meantime, please take care and enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to post a couple of links at the end of this for uh, a couple of worship pieces on YouTube. Please take the time to to listen to them. They are lovely pieces with lovely words. And again, one of them particularly talking about how God purifies us. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye.